Trent Bolt. Are you there? Trent Bolt. Yeah, I can hear you. You got me live from, uh, looks like the basement of Mount Monganui. Where are you, mate? Yeah, it looks like I'm in my own um, yeah, self-built uh, shrine, doesn't it? So, I've, yeah, just quickly threw it together just for this purpose. So, that's my wetsuit. It's never been used before. But, um, yeah, welcome. Good to be here. Mate, I'm absolutely wrapped. I don't know if you've got the brief. You're in the one-day You're in the one day teal kit there, actually. Um, yeah, nice touch. Yeah. And to be yep. fair, you're probably you're looking a little slim. Is that a fair to say? Not in a, not in a not in a mean way, but uh, yeah, a little a little lean. But uh, this shirt's been through the wash a couple of times. But I only got the one chance to wear it with the the one game in uh, in Aussie. So yeah, I didn't actually get changed for you. I'm just this is what I wear on a Sunday back home, just around the house. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just on the lawn. Yeah. Thing, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, how have things been, mate? I imagine um, yeah, a lockdown uh, with with a second new baby is probably not the worst time to be at home. Yeah, no, it's um. That's been that's been great in ways, really. Uh, nice to be back and and spend some family time and um, yeah, just just cruise. But um, yeah, things are slowly starting to get back to normal here in Mount Maunganui. But um, it looks like it's still a, a wee way away to, to to play some cricket. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm enjoying enjoying being home. Nice and uh, obviously as we move through the levels of lockdown, uh, your neighbours uh, Neil Wagner, how have you kept him at bay, particularly during the isolation period? I know he's pretty keen to usually get round to your house and wash your car. Yeah, that, that's a big positive. He normally mows my lawns, but um, yeah, he uh, needs to stay well, well away. So yeah, I didn't see him for uh, a good eight weeks or so there. But um, yeah, we caught up a couple of weekends ago and, and played a bit of golf. And he thought he had me, but um, he uh, yeah, he didn't in the end. But uh, that's a story for another uh, podcast, I reckon. Yeah, right. How what have you been doing in the last few weeks? Obviously, since um, the restrictions have been lifted, you've been able to get back to sort of running, gymming, obviously playing golf as well. Can you talk us through? Um, yeah, what your, what your regime sort of been like uh, as you come out of this? Yeah, just um, yeah, not too much. I think once we get a bit of an idea of when cricket's going to happen and where we're going, then um, yeah, that's when I can start planning the bowling and, and the, the lifting and whatever. But um, yeah, I'm probably down a couple of kilos, but uh, nothing too much to worry about. But uh, yeah, it's nice to do a little bit of uh, training that's not kind of so um, you know focused on the um, the action or the the bowling or the batting sometimes. Um, yeah, but um, no, nah, nah, family time has been the biggest positive and, and just some time around the house, which is, um, yeah, keep the everyone happy. Yeah, and I imagine, you know, following the last 18 months, um, which has been pretty much nonstop since last summer, hasn't it? Cricket World Cup, straight over to Sri Lanka, um, back England, Australia. I mean, did the break come at a pretty good time for you? Yeah, I was supposed to get on the on the ship to go to uh, India for the IPL, which was I was obviously excited about. It's pretty cool to get over there and, and be a part of uh, that stage and um, yeah unfortunately it's it's been put on ice maybe a, a chance for that later in the year but um, yeah I think we, we play so much cricket we make so many sacrifices we've been on the road and uh, been away from home and, and living out of these suitcases and stuff and um, yeah it is all part of it but nah she's been nice to to flip the role and um, you know be on the chores around the house and uh, yeah spend some time with the, the wife and kids so no nah, it's all good mate but uh, yeah nothing too much more from from me really but yeah, we're going to start this thing or we're we just going to have some Pillow chat, or we already started. <laughs> Are you sick of me talking about you? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're actually on air, mate. Would you believe? Um, oh, we're on air. Yeah, I just wanted to pick you up on one thing quickly. You mentioned you golf there, and and you and you got a head of wags. That's not actually the story that he told me. He said that you you got out there and said that you give him ten shots, and um, he didn't he didn't need ten shots. He beat you quite comfortably. And that is that is that true, or is there a wag and a line in there? Yeah, no, he's, oh, he's, yeah, you can't trust too many of his stories, but um, yeah, I arrogantly gave him 10 shots, thinking I'd absolutely destroy him after having a six-month honeymoon away from playing golf with, with two young young children. And but, uh, yeah, the, the three double bogeys to start really put me behind the eight ball, and then, um, yeah, he had a good four or five shot lead with five to play, and he had a beautiful nine on one of the par five, so yeah, that's when it just really mm -hmm. fell apart. <laughs> well, to be fair, yeah. Look, show me, uh, show me a, a father of a newborn who's uh, playing good golf and playing a lot of golf, and I'll probably show you a bad father. So I'm glad that your golf isn't in really tight shape. Um, interesting fact about Neil Wagner, actually, for people out there. Am I right in saying he uh, bats left-handed, but golf's right-handed? Yeah, he tries to bat left-handed, and he plays golf right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> But he genuinely actually can have it both ways as well. All right, well, Bolty, you, I can feel you want to get on with this, and that's no no, uh, no surprise, I suppose, with two youngins in the house. Um, thanks for dressing up. Thanks for bringing us into your man cave as well. Um, anything else in there that we need to see? Obviously, darts board, 
um, surfing. I don't know. What are you on a laptop? Can you turn that around, or are we slightly limited? Yeah, we're slightly limited. I can describe it. Well, there we go. We've got a oh, the guitar. Yep, we've got a guitar. Yeah. So I'm like, my mate Ed Sheeran. Um, one of my bats is just a photo of me that um, one of my fans in Sri Lanka, Krishan, actually, he sent that over. <laughs> yeah, they have my address, but um, yeah, he actually, Good he broke that up in the nets in Colombo and just passed it on. So that was quite cool. Um, yeah, not too much more to show you. There's some fishing rods up there that don't work. I've got Chicka Darwin's bat right here. Um, yep. I said to him, I forget you know, you. Bat, and um, yeah, he threw those those hands of his at a wide one. And um, let's come back to the mount. And it's the driver I'm running at the moment, the M5. That one normally takes a few flybys past Neil Wagner's drives. And that's probably about it, to be honest. We've got a couple of crooked helmets up there, but I can't really show you. Probably can try. Oh, dangerous. Could be a costly. Look at that. There's the rods. There they are. Oh, nice. Wow, look at that. And we'll go that way. Yeah. Oh, is that IPL to the right there? Yep. We've got sunrises in Delhi and um, Calcutta. So, yeah, I've been very lucky to be a part of that tournament. But, um, yeah, that's probably about yeah, it. Yeah. That's all I've really tried yeah. for this afternoon. <laughs> and There's you've got the new job. Job, just in case I forget it. Yeah, and me too, mate. Um, well, look, just to give you a quick wrap of what we've got on the show today, um, we've got a current teammate, a former teammate. Um, we've got some sections, some games, some who am I. Um, it's going to be fun. Obviously, it's a little bit new, mate. We've got no stings. We've got no intro music. I know that's one thing that me and you would really want to do. Uh, copyright law is not going to allow that, so we can't get the pump up. We're going to have to drive uh, the atmosphere ourselves. But um, I can see our next man, he's waiting in the wings. He looks like he has sorted out his um, he's sorted out his headphones. So it looks like he's got almost a wireless setup. I'm going to bring him in. He is one of your current uh, teammates, and he has just been awarded a New Zealand cricket contract for the first time. Obviously, he burst onto the scene uh, this summer against uh, some minnows by the name of India. Uh, here he is, Kyle Jameson. Welcome in. Welcome in, hey, fellas. How you going? Loving the here table, Bolsey. KJ, Kyle Jameson. Big fan of the kit. Yeah. Hey, I got told to put on a polo. Obviously, you missed that memo, and um, I couldn't find one. Don't tell the bosses at New Zealand Cricket. But, um, yeah, I'm in the I'm in the one-day <laughs> kit, so that's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. How you been, big fella? Yeah, I'm getting, yeah I've been good. Just just chilling uh, out south Auckland, mate. Just looking out here. Yeah, How sure. you been? That's prepared to be, J-Mo. I'm going to have to get you in a polo, mate. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Give me a polo. Possible? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get you. Yeah, I'm gonna find one. one. Have you got one at home? All right. Sorry, yeah, yeah, mate. Home. Sorry, mate. It's all right. <laughs> we can edit that. That's one for the the post cutting floor. He's come back. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, right there, actually, for that that, uh, that issue. Oh, all right. right. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Back. Yeah. Found it. All right, KJ, I'm gonna have to kick you out of studio yeah. and um and uh and bring you back in again. Okay. Was that oh, under, Was it under your pillow? Or how did you get it so quickly? <laughs> Yeah, it's under the uh, left corner of the duo. Nice. Can you just straighten it up for me, actually? We can probably roll with it just like that, KJ, because it looks good, mate. It looks real good. It's and then And Baldi, it was your first assignment as the host. You can just, yeah, you can, no, he's in. I, I think we just go for it. You can just bring him in now. Um, KJ, right. I'm actually going to show you a little bit of um, a little bit of your test debut as well. So, Baldi, talk us through this from one bowler to another, mate. Man, first of all, welcome, KJ. Um, look at that. Six foot what? Six foot seven. Um, yeah. Six foot eight. Six foot eight. Six foot eight. Beautiful uh, oh action coming through there. And uh, what was the day like? I can't really remember KJ, but it was probably a bit nippy, and the wicket was certainly green. And geez, you, you looked at home, big fella. What was what was going through your mind? Yeah, it was pretty pretty cold. Eh? It was overcast. Nice uh, nice green one to start off on, which was uh, every bowler's dream. So no, pretty uh, pretty special day. That's nice, and yeah, yeah. Obviously, you've got seven slips there, and you're probably coming in with a oh, we're, we're, we're flicked to the bat. Is that what, what's happening? Oh, you got a few runs as well, didn't you? Yeah, just just close the eyes and swing. I was actually thinking uh, if you go short, I'm just going to swing and just hope I get any piece of it. And luckily, I did. So uh, yeah. yeah, close the eyes, man, and just swing. He taught me that one well. Well, see, once I got uh, sconed in the head in that second test, he was uh, he was calling for me to go off the park so you could get that little red anchor. <laughs> oh, that and pure fear to be honest. That was Boomer, wasn't it, man? <laughs> that really ran into your grill that day. I remember the mud flaps came flying straight off the back. Yeah, I uh, I well and truly ate that one. Eh? Yeah, no, your eyes were definitely <laughs> shut. There, but um, 
Yeah, I came down. <laughs> yeah, we had Harry obviously going through the concussion test, and I was asking for a concussion test, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I remember a few balls before we were like, right, we're going to try and take as many runs as we can. And uh, I think I took a single and then came down, and you were just like, uh, actually, you just take care of Boomer. And I think next ball I got scorned in the lid. So, um, yeah, that quickly changed, didn't it? You got 49 in that innings as well, didn't you? You got caught. Looking back at the season, KJ, I mean, you obviously just got your first contract. Um, firstly, how exciting is that? And then secondly, can you can you give us some – your memories when you watch that footage back or when you think back to the season, uh, yeah, how, to, how it all sits now? Yeah, look, it's obviously, um, yeah, pretty special to be part of, uh, of that contract list and um, just keep moving on from what the last kind of six months and how that's unfolded and, um, yeah, just to kind of be um, in and around the group and learn and try and get better and um, just tap into all the other guys is going to be, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, like you said, that, uh, that first test and those first few games, just a bit of a childhood dream. So um, to kind of realise that and just um, obviously experience the game itself, but all the other little, I guess, in, uh, intricacies that um, go with it was, yeah, that's probably the best part for me. That's pretty cool. I remember you um, I wasn't a part of your one-day stuff when you first debuted at um, Eden Park, but your first poll was Pripfy, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Would you, have you played much at Eden Park? That's obviously a unique place, but where were you coming in from and, and what were you thinking? Uh, and that was my first time at Eden Park. Um, coming in from where the end, where the change rooms are. Um, yeah. well, I was actually lucky we'd had the A Series before that, where it had three games. So I got the bowl against him. He'd taken me to the cleaners, I think, in the first, uh, that first A one day. So I'd had, um, a little bit of a rerun of, well, yeah, of how uh, of how um, to bowl to him. So just uh, don't go back at a length because he'll put you into the stand and it's got a little bit fuller. And luckily, I don't know, I, I'm I usually swing the ball away, but somehow that one went back and went to the gate. So but yeah, that's pretty cool. No, wicked. Have you have you been to India at all? No, never been. Yeah, well, that's where that. Yeah, you, you take those little outswingers over there and they bounce about shin high and then you try that <laughs> that you didn't realise you had and then it's when he just leans on that just through mid-wicket. So I think you should really appreciate that one for for all it was and um, that was a great start, bro. It's obviously, hopefully a lot more to come of that. It's wicked. Okay, yeah, Jay, no, you, fingers crossed. KJ, <laughs> just sorry, mate. You're talking about that debut at Eden Park and you spoke about your batting before I, I remember you actually got in a, a partnership with Ross Taylor that was your first thing you did in the game and got us through to a pretty decent total how important was that to sort of flow on to your bowling do you think oh massive um I think it just got got me into the game which was which was I was actually when I was walking out I was actually I was actually packing it um I was pretty uh pretty nervous and just trying to get one run and I think I was about one off 13 or something like that and um I was thinking oh geez I'm gonna I'm going to pop this up for everyone, but um, oh, yeah, it was nice to, yeah, just, well, I, mean, I wasn't even defending it, mate. I was, I was playing and missing it a lot and trying to slash and slash from, um, over the backward point and miss. And uh, uh, yeah, no, that was, that was cool. It sort of uh, got me the game a wee bit and that just rolled. Um, you go off quickly for a feed and um, come back out. So kind of get, um, catching the game quite nicely. Have you got any um, footage? Because I don't know if too many people know, but, Tell us uh, about a, a certain tour match. England was in town. It was at Seddon Park. And you're saying you can't play. <laughs> Tell me how many runs you got in the game, mate. Against one of the best test, test 11s in the world. And against one of the seamers that Scott, well, he's the leading team of all time in terms of wickets taken. So, yeah, tell me tell me more about how you can't bat. <laughs> I was actually, uh, was it? Park. You know, Seddon uh, Park, if you get on one side of the block, you can get that small boundary to the hill. Um, I remember early on, Mark Wood came round the wicket, and I was just like, "Oh no, this is coming quick!" And at my um, at my sweep, and just I was like, "I'm just going to try and hit to the small boundary," and got one away. And then I thought, "Right, I'm just going to I'm just going to keep going here," and um, yeah, managed to get a feel of the middle and came off the park with a with a nice little hundred, which was which was good. <laughs> Definitely not going to be in for the in for the batter's money, is he, Baldy? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, KJ, just quickly, uh, I know Bolty's here, so it's probably a bit awkward, but can you give, uh, I suppose, the fans an idea of what it's like to step into a changing room with, with such established players, particularly when you came in 
to the test um, squad. Obviously, Bolte and a few of the others had had missed that ODI series. What was it like at the Basin Reserve, sort of the, the spiritual home of uh, cr- Test cricket in New Zealand? Um, what was it like to come into that changing room for the ahead of that test? Yeah, oh, it was cool. Um, without trying to blow smoke up, uh, smoke up Bolte's backside. Um, no, I mean, like so much of my growing up and through high school and stuff has been, you know watching all formats, but especially that test side with, you know, with him and with uh, Tim and Wags and stuff, and then to kind of be in that um, change room with such an established group of guys, just to be a part of that was was pretty surreal. And um, just to try and soak that all up was Roscoe's 100th game as well, which was which is cool to be a part of. And um, just, I think probably just how, um, how that, you know, week went with the capping ceremony before the game and just how it, um, everything unfolded. At a pretty um, pretty cool ground in the basin was yeah uh, kind of hard to hard to get my head around really just you know being in that in that situation yeah that's probably the unique part it was it was Roscoe's first game as well so there's that uh, not first game hundredth game um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a yeah. Of, yeah a lot of a lot of um, attention and you know the ceremony that came with that and the celebration was pretty cool but um, I think looking back on on myself was me getting my first cap the black cap is what you know. A lot of cricketers in the country kind of admire and um, you know strive so hard for. So yeah, I, I can definitely remember the feeling of the, the first time I put that on. But um, yeah, bro, that was a that was a wicked week for you, really. The, everything that came with it and had a ground like that against a, a side like that, and um, you know it's one of New Zealand's you know, more well known, uh, more famous, and, and most historic Test venues. And um, no, it was a, a brilliant week for you, bro. Yeah, it was. Speaking of, um, you know, famous victories, wasn't you? You're talking about your test debut there, Bolte, aren't we? We're over in Hobart. Is that, is that right? The famous victory over the Australians. You came in and smacked a few round. Um, yeah. Yep. In me- memories from there, mate. Was it your first test as well? Yeah, that was my first. I wasn't actually supposed to play. Daniel Vittori had sore hammy, so they brought uh, my left arm swingers in for his left arm spinners. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that morning of the game, just pretty much got my first hat there on the boundary and, and I was into it, so yeah, I was only like twenty, I reckon, and um, yeah, it was a it's a big experience. I, I actually had braces on the the week before I got uh, <laughs> before I got selected, and I remember going to the orthodontist saying, "Yeah, I can't go to Australia with a set of braces <laughs> on my teeth." And um, I, I specifically remember it. I walked out there to bat, absolutely packing myself. And Brad hadn't looked at me. He goes, "Mate, does your mother know where you are?" Like this, he was just getting into me, and I was just. You know, <laughs> Getting myself, mate. I was, but um, yeah, I, I do remember the celebrations after that, winning uh, by six runs, and um, yeah, they've always said that. Well, everyone you play with that has played Test cricket and understands Test wins. It's um, you definitely got to savor them and enjoy them because they're a very hard to come by, and, and b you don't know when your next one's going to come by. So yeah, you, you're lucky, bro. You've had a couple of good good starters, and um, yeah, long mate, can can it continue? Okay, Jay, uh, I've got a quick audio interlude here for you, mate. Um, I'm curious to see uh, whether this will make you feel proud, uh, embarrassed, uh, slightly awkward, or uh, really emotional. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy for all, all of the above um, to sort of apply to this. So just going to play you something here. I hope you can hear it because obviously we're on new technology, aren't we, Bolty? So we're just sort of trying to find our feet here. Um my headphones aren't even plugged in. I've just realised that they're just around the old net. Hi Kyle, it's Mum. I'm just checking in to see if you've got your shirt tucked in. <laughs> Remember back to those days when your coach said, to take the field you must look like a cricketer. And that meant your shirt tucked in. Funny, that coach was also your father. Well, what a journey it's been. Who would have thought that when you were two and a half, playing with Dad's bat and pads in the backyard, that you would be where you are at today. Should have known when you went to bed wearing your new cricket gloves at four that you kind of liked the game. And telling us at eight you'd be a black cat one day. Then again, lots of kids are like this. I recall when you were nine and you'd won a spot in the Shadow Eleven team. You know, that competition where you got to walk out on Eden Park with the black caps. I wondered then if this is the closest you would get to being on the park. Now it's fair to say, we are not the gushiest of families, but I hope you do know just what a privilege it is to be your parents and to call you our son. 
I'm quite sure my heart stops until you have faced at least a few balls. And it's the same when you get a wicket. I like to think when I concentrate hard enough and shut out everyone around me as you are running in, that I help get the wicket too. That's just how much pleasure I get. And I know you probably think that's silly. Dumb mum, eh? It hit me hard when I saw you standing with the black caps with your first national anthem and realised this is the big time. Brittany, your sister and your dad and I were so proud. It's hard to explain and it's a little scary but we wouldn't miss it for the world. Kyle, you know the little action I do as a reminder from many years ago at cricket. Well that is more than what you remember. When you see me and I do that, it is a symbol of the years of fun we have had with cricket. It's about remembering your roots and where you are at now. I hope this journey takes you as far as you want it to go. You will always have the backing and support of us and we love you no matter what. Well, didn't, uh, I didn't see that one coming. Well, you've done a good job there. Um, Got in. Yeah. I don't know if my English skills are well, uh, you know, are good enough to use the uh, use the right words to describe that. But um, yeah, I think, like Mum says, like we're probably not like, I guess, the country families um, in terms of that stuff. But to hear, to hear that was was pretty cool. And um, look, I was like. It's cool that it's cool that you know I get to do this and get to you know play a test and be a part of the group and stuff. But I think for you know for mum and dad and the family, they it's as much you know their reward or their journey that is mine, and um, you know they probably put in as much hard work and effort as as what we do as players. And um, it's cool to see that it can I guess, impact and affect them, you know, the way it does. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool to watch. Some nice yeah. photos in there as well from from swinging across the line as well, which is nice. No, that's pretty awesome, really. That's. Um, Do you remember going on with? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, that's, I, yeah. Probably haven't got quite got the words to describe what that means, but lucky it's it's yeah, that's pretty special, and they've been so supportive over um, twenty odd years and. Um, you know, they came to all my first couple of games and stuff, which was cool for them. And yeah, look, it's just, just special to have people like that in your corner. It's awesome, mate. Well, uh, Baldy, unless there's anything else you've got for the big man, um, we might look for the transition in the in the studio here. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with the um, the whole episode there. To be honest, that, that finish on a very sentimental note, and um, yeah, it's got got my goosebumps going and. I'm a little bit rattled if that comes my way with the Bolt Mum package on. <laughs> yeah, you I'm just wait, mate. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know when that's coming out, but yeah, I think we should um, yeah, move the uh, the current modern day all rounder, um, move them out, and we'll bring in back some old school flavour with um, Jacob Ora. Love that intro, and I'm going to keep you on, Jamo, because I'm going to bring you in. And, and here he comes from uh, the Palmerston North uh, Media Centre. I'm seeming, to, it looks like your mic might be off, Jake. Um, Not yeah, there you go. Oh, he's he's an experienced this guy. <laughs> right, hit me, my mum. Go we... hit it. Yeah, Where's my mum's words. <laughs> <laughs> well, but before we transition you out, Jake. I mean, yeah, we said one one modern day all rounder to a, a former modern day all rounder. Um, what did you think of the big man? Just looking to your left's, uh, you know, debut season. Well, it's my right, Willie. Um, but look, it was amazing. I. You know, I, well, I actually, Boldy, I want to come to you about you calling me about the old school stuff, um, old timer. It's funny, I am 40, what am I this year? 42 this year, which I am now getting old. But um, I'd like to think I am a massive cheerleader for the Black Caps. Uh, I'm not one of those retired, bitter guys who dislikes the current generation. And in my day, it was better because um, that's a given. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so whenever I see... <laughs> Whenever I see guys coming through, and I think I understand, I think domestic cricket is as strong as it's, well, in the time I've been around, you know, um, either playing or coaching or watching, I think it's as strong as I've seen. So I'm not surprised when people get the call up and like Kyle start performing straight away. And I think we've seen it over the, a number of years. 
probably six, seven, eight years now where guys make the step up and they're ready to go. So I um, also saw Kyle a little bit last year, went to training squad and realized, you know, talent's there. When he gets his opportunity, he'll be away. And, and it was great to see the, those performances. It's great that you know each other because, KJ, I was going to say, you do, you know you, you know who that is, don't you? I do, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, I remember the Aussie series, I think, over in Aussie was my first, yeah. first memory series. of you, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> and that front leg, you pulling them over the rope. Right. What do you mean clearing it? It was perfect technique. <laughs> <laughs> Are we Dumbly supposed to be serious on this podcast? I'm not quite sure. Uh, no. We're all just no. trying to find our feet. Um, JMO, we're going to drop you out, as Baldy said. Um, thanks for coming on. Congratulations on uh, your season and getting a New Zealand cricket contract. And thanks very much for being here, mate. Awesome. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Catch you later. See you later. Jeez, Jake, you almost disappeared then. I dropped you with him. You're dropping me, mate. Yeah, all good. First time it is. Mm. Jake, what a pleasure to have you on. Hey, I'm looking forward to it, guys. I really am. I've actually come out, even though it's uh, Sunday, are we allowed to say live time? Um, I've come out to work here to Mass University because I thought, let's get the the real good internet going so we're not dropping out mm. with poor bandwidth in Palms to mm. North, but um, we'll be fine. Yeah. He sounds clear, doesn't he, too, Willie? I think it's the headpiece he's running. Yeah, he's an experienced um, media man, as we will actually come to later when I've got another presentation uh, for Jake. But um, since I've got you guys both on together, can you can you give me some? You mentioned back in back in my day, Jake. I'd love to know back in back in your day when a young Trent Bolt uh, turned up in the Black Caps camp mm. for the first time. Uh, two things that come to mind. I wasn't on. I heard you before when I was in the green room uh, or backstage. No, the t- <laughs> no, the. T- um, <laughs> Talking about your test debut, Bolt. I mean, I'd well and truly given up five day matches before then. Um, I remember that watching that test match actually, Dougie getting a few wickets as well, which was awesome. But um, two things I remember pre season camp, probably about September ish, where they had like 20 odd guys down there and it was practice matches in, uh, at Lincoln University there. And I remember thinking, because like, domestically I'd seen you and it was like, you were here and then I remember seeing you one preseason these camps and it was like up there and it was like you'd put three yards of pace on swinging it at pace I was just glad as a left-hander because James Franklin used to get me out for fun with that shape away that I was by this stage I'd fallen well down the list so I wasn't gonna have to worry about that but that was one thing and another thing I remember the Sri Lankan tour 2012 maybe 2013 yeah. and we both weren't playing in Palakali or something like that and um I remember we were sort of doing our loads to each other while the game was going on and keeping a real keen eye on the, what was happening on the middle. Um, and you just kept whacking me out the ground. I thought, hang on. I thought this guy's like number 11 and look at the technique. But that's when I thought he's got a good hand-eye coordination and he'll be fine. And and the career's showing that, obviously. Oh, it must have been great back then to face up, just, you know, take some, you know, genuine 135K all around the bouncy deliveries and yeah i don't really remember popping them i might have hit them but who knows where they went no nah, uh, trust me i think saudi or well, someone else was not playing there was three of us and and yeah i remember you just whacking a few out the screws and i was trying all the tr- look i wasn't 135 let's be honest that was two balls put together <laughs> but at, at that stage but um yeah i was trying everything i had round the wicket slow balls i think bouncer had, was that was about three years expired by that point yeah. But uh, you keep going. And I thought, yeah, time to retire. Let's get out of here. Yeah, love it. And Jake, what have you been doing since, mate? I mean, give a, give give those out there who haven't been following your post-career as closely as the rest of us. Um, what have you been up to, big man? I am now, what am I, 2020? Are you okay? I, I retire. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm <laughs> yeah. uh six years retired now so I was fortunate to get a role I left cricket when I left cricket well I stopped playing for the Black Caps I had another year or so of of freelance contracted 2020 mercenary player as as you do um and then after that I was finishing off my degree here at Massey University um if I hadn't mentioned that and I crossed paths was with a guy called Mark Cleaver uh, Dane Cleaver's father anyway he was um working here at Massey and what are you up to, Jake? I'm finishing my degree. What's it in business? Oh, well, I'm the director at commercialization. But one thing leads to another, and I had an opportunity handed to me, which was great. And um, I've been here since. So 
Messi's been great to me. I'm full time now in a sport advancement role, which is kind of like a director of sport, easier to understand. Um, aside from that, and and look, it's been great to be away from cricket because I think you've learned. Well, I have learned massive amounts of new skills um, and had experiences which I think as a player you don't get, which is fine. I mean, you get a lot of experiences as a player that you don't get elsewhere. But also to, to maintain that fix on cricket, I've been working with the Stags, CD Stags, and um, the White Ferns for a number of years in a bowling and now field and coach role. And, and that week we had in Sydney, Bolte, which was uh, really good fun and awesome to be back a part of the Black Caps. So, yeah, coaching and and non-coaching work, Willie. I tell you, um, they say, I thought everyone's always said to me throughout my career is, is one thing is that life goes on after cricket and it's um, – yeah, probably been something pretty humbling over the last kind of couple of months with all the COVID-19 stuff and, um, you know, everything that's gone on and how it's literally shut down, well, cricket itself, but all sorts of things. But it's been really, um, I suppose, a good chance for me to refresh and understand that there's so much more to life than cricket. But how were you going through, you know, through your career? Were you so passionate about it and just, you know, needed needed it so bad or were you kind of relaxed or, or what, what were you thinking? I was rehabbing half the time, <laughs> so that was that kept me focused. Um, no, look, I I went through three phases. I was probably in um, Kyle's phase of that, you know, just starting that, let's say, rookie phase, and everything was just awesome, and you you know, possum my headlights the whole time, just loving life. Um, and then um, the third phase, whoa, that's distracting. Um, there he is. Yeah, there he goes. And here we are. Uh, so and then and then so that period that maybe first third it was just you know anything that cricket and life could throw at me was fine I was bulletproof and then I had a few injuries and and th- at that point as well I was actually still studying so I was still preparing myself for the afterlife uh, the middle period I think is when I was probably playing my best cricket unfortunately injuries started as well um, and I I put study on the back burner because I was playing as you know Boldy you you start playing nine ten eleven months a year and you're just too busy and the focus was there and then. To be honest with you, when the physical ailments started to win and started to erode my mental fortitude, then I thought, okay, let's get back in some study. And um, because I knew, you know, people had told me since I was probably 20, 21, 22, that, you know, you're you're a long time retired. And I probably didn't quite listen to that till I was 30, but I retired when I was, what, 34, 35 by that stage, had a degree, could use it. And I'm not saying a degree equals a post cricket life. But for me, it, it, it helped. And it also fulfilled a, something I'd started way back when I left school. So um, I think it's okay to go like that. I really do. And without getting on my soapbox, I think it's okay to be not know what you're going to do. But as long as you have kind of some options and it's not retire on Sunday and then wake up on Monday morning and go, right, what am I doing? You know, yeah. um, so there's my piece. <laughs> I like it. How many tests did you play in there? 100 and... <laughs> Uh, so I thought you said missed. Um, uh, 33, 30, 33 in the end. Um, yeah, it's probably, well, if I can just expand on that small question of yours. Uh, probably my biggest regret in cricket was not playing more test cricket. And I know people, you know, I think the public and, and, and journos will talk about IPL and 2020 leagues and the money in that form of the game. And I know it's a real cliche to say that most players would like you know, a good test career and good test stats. And I think that's really true. And even when you retire, you really, you know, like, let's be completely honest. I had a couple of really good years in the IPL and my bank manager is thankful for that, you know, but I still would have loved to have played more test cricket, um, got more test centuries, got one test five for us or more, you know, got to a hundred test wickets, you know, I would have loved that. I really would have. Um, and that only comes with playing more tests. So if I'd got to that, say 50 test mark, that would have been really cool, but not to be. And the, the, the body didn't want to play like the mind did, you know? Yeah. I think like when we're touching on it with Kyle, with, with you know, getting your yeah, first... Good, good luck to him at his height. Jeez, carry on. <laughs> getting his first black cap and then yeah, you just rock in and no, he's, he's obviously had a great start in that, but those test wins are so hard to come by as it is. But mm. I, I think that is the best feeling when you're winning winning a test, but then when you're winning one overseas, um, you know, it's, it's such a graph to be able to, to pull that off, so yeah, yeah. yeah. lucky enough to be part of a couple, but yeah, yeah. Look, you guys, you know, this current team. Well, I say current, like not 
you know, like, what are we in 2020? Maybe five years, five summers. When like we just we just win all the time, you know, and and it's great. It really is cool. And um, I would love to have been in a lot more te- well to have played more and to be in a lot more test wins. And I and I think especially big tests or big series, away series. And like you know, when you guys have been to Pakistan or to, uh, I should say UAE and won there, that's unbelievable. Um, you know, you've done well in England. Uh, so look, I. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, a test win is special because, as you know, Baldy, it's not just a three or six hour bit of work, and at the end of it, someone's had a good game, and hey, we can all be satisfied in that. You know, you have to really work your asses off for that. So, um, you know, we had some good wins, we had some easy wins, you know, against some developing nations, but we had a couple of good wins. But to be honest, out of thirty-three tests, not enough. Wish I'd played more. Wish I'd had more of those big wins, but not to be. And life goes on, like you say. So, Jake, what do you see as the big difference then between, you know, the teams of your era versus the teams are now and, and to try and explain those results, I suppose? Uh, I think that's a bit, that's a huge... Without putting the pros into your own teams. <laughs> yeah. Well, to start with, let's talk about the opening batters. Yeah. No. <laughs> no um, yeah. Well, obviously, have 11 more obviously, number six and first change bowler was flawless. Uh, <laughs> no, I think... Um, Fit. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about like our area, like more the t- current team I see. Like you, the current team has genuine, and you may want to switch your mic and camera off, Baldy, but I think this current team has genuine, world class, all time, you know, New Zealand all time great match winners uh, up and down the lineup. Um, I mean, when I started, we had, you know, Fleming and Astor, Perori was there, um, Dion Nash, even for a few tours, Dan. I think Dan was still maybe about 13 at the time. Uh, you know, Bondi was there, but, you know, he was in and out like I was all the time. And we, they were kind of our match winners. I'm sure I'm forgetting, you know, some people, which sucks. But, um, you know, now I just, it, it feels like every game we play. Sorry, who was that, Willie? Like I was going to say, you got, you got plenty yeah. there, mate. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, you guys are breaking up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Whereas I see, I, I see this current team and I think, you know, there's probably, I was going to say four or five, but it's probably more like six, seven, eight guys who, you know, if you, in five years' time, if you generated an all-time New Zealand list, they're in that discussion. And I think that is a massive thing. It's not just good players and we're trying to fill gaps. We're talking about really good players who have got unbelievable stats and records and they know how to win games with a lot of matches under their belt. So, um, you know, and I think as well, let's while, while you're going to be talking about the old school versus the new school. Um, Willie, what are you doing? That's sorry, man. I'm just trying to get closer to the power, mate. You can't stay 45 minutes outside without no. the power. I'm getting motion and sick. And I, I, really I, apologize. Yeah. I also reckon. Oh, I also mate. think you know New Zealand cricket as an organisation probably needs a you know a pat on the back as well because I think the amount of money being p- pumped into the game now men's and women's cricket, grassroots, domestic, I think goes a long way as well, which means we can develop our bit, better young players a lot sooner as well. It means we've got a stronger domestic competition, as I said about Kyle earlier. Um, if the standard of domestic cricket's better than you're creating that sort of bottleneck effect, then I think guys at the Black Caps know they have to keep pushing harder and working harder and being better to stop these guys underneath, you know, knocking on their door. And I was actually just thinking, Willie, about Jake's test career. I was involved in a test match that he was a part of. I, I wasn't in the uh, the plane 11, but Jake, Seddon Park, Ryan oh. Seibold was the test uh, hat trick. Mm-hmm. Do you remember a young whippy Trent Bolt mm-hmm. running track that week or not? Yeah, I was waiting for the question. I wasn't going to pick up on that. Uh, uh, I, well, yeah, I remember that test match, Baldy, uh, for, for not so good reasons. And I remember Jeffrey Boycott giving me absolute stick after that, and some. So oh, we went to oh, because we followed them back, so they took it here, and then we followed them back to England. So it was kind of almost like a six-test match series over the space of four or five months. And we went to Lords Boulder. You'll know. You, oh, I don't know if they still do it, but they have a a meal for the touring team to start at MCC at Lords. There, I don't know if they still do it. Anyway, they did way back then in the in the sixties and seventies. But uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Boycott was the guest speaker and. He just stood up there and basically abused me for a lack of foot movement and all that sort of stuff and being part of that hat trick, which I appreciated and uh, got a lot of motivation out of. So um, I do remember that test. There he is. I think he got me out. 
I think he got me out probably 95% of the time he bowled to me. I was talking about James Franklin before and yourself, Baldy. I think I think they just threw the ball to him whenever even I was next in. They were like, okay, warm up, no worries. Yeah, and, they uh, all, man. Yeah. But I say to all left-handers now that I'm coaching, uh, which to be fair isn't many, <laughs> but about the whole left arm swing to left-hand bat and like trying to help them with their alignment and you know your setup and what your eyes are doing. And it's just like, boys, if you... If you ever had a look back in time, you'd realise I was talking just absolute gibberish. <laughs> was it shoulder arms for the LB? I was just trying to remember. Uh, I take offence to that. Yep. Um, but no, I didn't. No, I mean, what you're implying there is <laughs> a complete lack of confidence in my own game, which to be fair oh, is not God. far off the truth. But uh, if I can segue from that, actually, Willie, is that was a pretty low ebb in my batting, yeah, exactly. Ooh. Uh, that wasn't fun times around about that 08, 09. I had been pinned not long before that by Brett Lee, concussed when John Bracewell thought I should be a number three in 2020 cricket because I'd hit a few sixes, you know, in the 48th over when the ball's 48 overs old and the ball's not bouncing above waist height. So I jump up to number three, but no knee T 2007 or 2008 T20 World Cup in South Africa. Three balls in, concussed, experiment, fail, <laughs> back down to the middle order. Jeez. Carry on. Uh, tough, tough, no, yeah. tough moments in your career. That's something for all players. And Bolty, you'd probably be the same. It's it's not all uh, taking wickets and hat tricks and five fives, is it? There is tough moments in your career. What do you, you reflect on your own ones so far? What have been the more challenging ones? Oh, I, yeah. I don't really like talking about getting pinned while batting, but. I haven't really been pinned too badly, but yeah, Mitchell Stark broke my hand at the MCG on that Boxing Day test, and I hope he's not watching because it was terrifying stuff. But um, yeah, I think any kind of any kind of um, setback like that and and time out of the game, it's just um, yeah, it's a massive learning curve. I think when I was actually when you know, I wasn't twenty, I was probably nineteen, maybe. 18 and a half. I, I had a stress fracture in my back, and I've I've always said it was the best thing that's ever happened to me, kind of thing, because. It just shows you the the yards and the um, the work that you have to put in to you know be able to stay at that level and, and perform at that level and geez like that was that was ten years ago and um, you know fast forward there was a lot of cricket on back there and now fast forward now we're just playing so much cricket and you know a lot of people are oh, you had beers with the guys after the game and you know do you socialise much with the other team and etc but it's just crazy like you're playing them Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday they have Friday off and then you start the next game on the weekend like. It's just so relentless. So, yep, the injuries are a, a tough one, but um, yeah, it, it definitely makes you appreciate the yards they have to go into to being out there on the park. Jake, I, sh I showed you a few photos before, and uh, and apologies for firstly uh, changing the setting of my um, my hosting here. We had a bit of a power outage at the Nichols HQ in Christchurch, so I had to jump on uh, the main thing. I've got a few photos, guys, um, that I've put together in the week. I have done my prep. Um, thank you. And I just want you guys to sort of talk me through it. Um, sort of, you know, what you're thinking at the time. Where are you? There's there's a real mixture um, in this, which you're going to enjoy, I, I, I expect. So um, I'll just get this up here and, and do it. I would never doubt your prep either, Willie. I'd never doubt that. No. And, it's a pre and I appreciate that, actually. It's very nice. So we'll just get on to this one here. Thanks a lot. Load it up, though. That's the only negative. There it is. Talk me through this one and go into the mind of Jacob Oram. Tell us the year. W stars the sponsor, so well, that should give you a start. Yeah. It looks like something's wrong with my teeth there, actually. I'm wondering if there's a big bit of chewing gum in there. But that, to me, that represents... Uh, I've got no idea. I want to... Uh, just just absolute focus, I suppose. Uh, that looks like Eden Park. Um, it, what, look at my glasses. Where do you reckon that is? i got no idea, mate. It could be uh, Jade Stadium, potentially. Yeah. 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 Old school. It looks like we'll I'm looking up on. at the site screen thinking, how many bloody overs have I got left? <laughs> uh, Tim Tim there is probably pinching my ass or something, knowing him and that smile. But uh, uh, yeah, of course I remember that. That's the ANZ Awards, Cricket Awards. Tim's suit looks like he's, yeah, got yeah. the wrong guys there. Well, that reminds me, there's actually a similar photo that when and if we get Neil Wagner into the pod, the pod room, uh, we pod room, love it. 
but um yeah, me and Tim wanted to have a photo and Wags was in the middle and Tim actually asked him if he could <laughs> just move that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> must have really wanted one with Jake there. So that's that's what that Yeah, that's a good photo. Can you send me that, Willie? Yeah. I can. I can also send you the next one as well, which just shows your absolute athleticism, which is something yes. that always gets me going, Jake. Yeah, that's that's uh that's England, isn't it? That would that would have been two thousand and eight. That's that follow up to it after the hat trick, which Bolty uh, brought up. Uh, thank you. So that's uh, that's old KP, isn't it? Which he was an amazing player, but um, the follow through, the the poise, the balance, the one twenty one twenty eight k now. <laughs> now this is what we want to get back to because Jake, um, for for most of the us uh, fans of cricket, the clearing of the hip and the absolutely smoking the Aussies over the Tasman is what many of us will remember. Can can you take us through uh, when this became a thing and how you recall it? Um, that that would have been like context. That's that would have been oh seven. So before the World Cup in the West Indies, uh, when we had a tri series there, I think. Uh, I don't know. I just, I mean, I'm you know, six foot whatever, six six foot seven. If it's the last few overs to get my leg and hip out of the way, it needs to go a long way. You know, just how long the bloody thing is. So I just started to, to develop that, and as I actually as I've done more coaching and especially doing some stuff with, with, with baseball around throwing fielding and also some power hitting, you realize you've just got to get that leg and hip out of the way to generate torque. That's T O R Q U E, uh, you know, into that power to, to be able to generate that through your hips and your ass. So, um, I didn't do that by on purpose that I sort of stumbled across it, but look, it, it helped me free my arms. And I think back then I say back then and quote unquote, but I think, you know, it was still sort of straight Yorkers and it meant you could be a little bit more um, predictable as a batter because the bowler was pretty predictable. If they were able to hit a Yorker, well, you're stuffed like you are now, but there wasn't quite the the slower ball options or going wide hole or around the wicket or whatever it was. So it was kind of like a little bit baseball-y. You could bowl a bouncer, but still it wasn't two new balls um, and you could sit up and just wait for them to miss and then hopefully with a good swing, you could get it away. It's obviously been uh, mirrored by some pretty quality players. Oh, wow. Look at that. My, there's a big difference here, though. Mine's going over mid-off. <laughs> Good man. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> My, yeah. Right there. yeah. Hmm. Are your bales still on there, Baldy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's great. Uh, great. Boys oh, summer yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Some oh, big no. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm worried about where this is going to go because I feel like it's going from good to not so. Uh, oh, it's oh, going to go a, better. Yeah, look at um, that. Just Blurry. to go back to that though, that's Mom, another thing yeah. I think is has changed from from previously to now. The apps, I mean, the athletes, the body shapes, and I mean, with that week I had in Sydney with the black caps and I was doing the fielding stuff, I was amazed. There's no donkeys. There's just there's just guys with good arms and they throw themselves around and they they're fit and they're agile and it was good fun to be part of. Back then, it was still good fun to be part of, but it was just different. The game was different. We needed to be different. Um, still good-looking bunch of blokes here. Absolutely. Let's go to the next memory because this is one. Uh, this this looks like South Africa to me. World Cup. <laughs> uh, well, you've got the latter, latter half. Well, yes, sorry. Apologies. Uh, you mean against South Africa? I thought you meant in South Africa. Uh, yes, no. that was the quarterfinal um, where everyone had ridden us off. Um, South Africa were probably one of the favourites for the whole title. They'd cruised through. We had battled our way through as we do or as we did back then. Um, and we only got about 210 or 220 as we did. We battled to that. and um, But we bowled our asses off and fielded really well. Um, and it was cool. It was really good action. That's the infamous where I think it was Kyle Mills and others had come on at drinks and started a fracas with Faf du Plessis. So it was a real fighting effort, you know. Do you remember watching that, Bolte? Yeah, I do. I remember there's a couple of lovely photos of Ross Taylor just showing his passion um, mm. you know, in the middle there. But you don't see that often, the, the water boys coming on and, and getting involved as well. But um, yeah, I don't know how old. Yeah. What year were we talking? It's pretty young. 2011, I think. Yeah, 11. 
Yeah, Jake Oram on the uh, square leg fence, I believe, to catch a man on the run by the name of Jack Callis. Absolute match turner. Let's go along to something that's going to get a little bit more um, off the field. And Jake, when I went back through the archives to look for photos of you, as I just genuinely do, um, it became apparent that you've run a few different hairstyles in your time. Oh. So I've just, yeah, you knew where this was going. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not, Willie, you didn't say this was going to happen. <laughs> As long as there's not one in particular that I think, I mean, that, that happens. I was probably a teenager there, still at high school. That happens. That's saying, that there is saying, I'm, I'm, I don't know what it's saying, but at the time, I tell you, at the time that was in, that was, I don't know what yeah. it was in, but it was in. Well, it sort of progressed and actually got quite glorious at certain stages. Yeah. That's kind of the intellectual sort of look. Yeah, that's when gla I started to have to wear glasses. That's what I blame a lot of my flaws on eyesight. Mick Jagger there. Who? Mick Jagger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> Boy, oh, wow. that's serious. I'm glad that's not zoomed in. Uh, yeah, look, a couple of summers I played. Hot summers, big sun-kissed effect. Uh, and I wasn't going to fight it. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and there's one at the awards potentially with your lovely wife Mara mm -hmm. throwing out the blonde hair. That one's quite a different look as well, a bit shorter, but more sort of serious. Another hot summer <laughs> by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, and pensive looking. Yeah, I don't know what the photographer wanted out of. I don't know what he wanted out of me there, but he's got it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and Bolty, you say oh. I make you guys do some 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 tough photo shoots, but yeah, this is sort of this is next level kind of stuff. I actually also went through and found. I don't know if you're aware of Justin Morgan, the uh, Vodafone warrior, who now coaches the Kiwi woman. I actually thought there's quite a bit of uh, similarities there, mm -hmm. not just in your toughness either, but your your, your look. I don't think that's too this, really. Yeah, so was, what, what about this one? This is good. What's happening here? Uh, that is a, what were we doing there for a photo shoot for what? I, I do vaguely remember it. Um, yeah, Ross Taylor know. in the Friday night shoes, the snake yeah, skins. Yeah, we'll see those shoes. And I'm just hood, hoodie up, just thinking I'm tougher than I am. Yeah, I don't know. It's like an, uh, the eight mile video sort of comes to mind. Oh, this is good. What's that, that, that is advertising. I actually remember that. Yeah, that's the tour I was talking about before. That's the Sri Lankan. So we're up and down in a helicopter, which some didn't enjoy because I think those choppers were out of the Cold War or something like that from the 70s or I don't know what. And uh, there was a lot of rattling going on, I tell you. That we got you wouldn't there. have loved that, Bolty, would you? Be no, honest. And I remember it being hot. And I actually remember the dress code there with our black polos, their shoppers. And then it was just bring your own shorts day. Like, it was <laughs> anything, eh? It was, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, player power. <laughs> yep. See, passing on knowledge. Yeah. Or is that saying that actually at that stage of my career I might be saying I can see rain clouds <laughs> there and there. <laughs> I thought it might have just been you telling anecdotes. This is where I hit him. This is where I hit him. No, that probably like in all honesty, being a professional, I would have been like, "Yep, deep square, long on." You know. <laughs> Etc. Etc. Yeah. Et cetera, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's Adam Milne at about, well, Tina. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carry I've got on. that. Adam Milne. Yeah. Adam Milne. Yeah. And, and with you at the stags there. Yeah. How yeah. is Milne, to be fair? He's still come back from the ankle again. Not sure. I, I saw Milne at the start of lockdown. Uh, and then not since, actually. I should touch face with him. So thank you. I'll, that's a reminder to get hold of him, see how he's going. I, I like Adam. He's a really good guy. And a good cricketer, but and I have empathy for the way his body has gone. So I'll touch base. Thank you. That's I on the show, isn't it, Bobby? He's um he's running well, and he's obviously just uh waiting here to what, what's happening with cricket and where we're going. But no, he's had a, a light couple of months, right? Well, yeah, probably a year or so, really, with some unlucky injuries. But yeah, he can seriously play. Good. Good player when he's at the top of his game. Uh, Bolty, mm. as a golfer, you can probably break this one down for us. What sort of positions he got himself into there? Yeah, he looks, well, that looks like an R7 to me, tailor-made. Um, yeah, it's back. I reckon that's at a golf day, New Zealand cricket players golf day, where 
they used to bring out the bloody one sport was there, three sport was there. They had the celebrity cooks on some of the holes and it was a big event. I remember everyone teed off in front of the cameras. I don't know if that was the, uh, mm -hmm. might have been the option because we got the footage, but um, yeah, it looks like it's gone left. <laughs> yeah, probably. Has, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do have a, a slight, um, what's it called? Oh, okay. Slice. <laughs> um, like a but it's because I think my hands what is it Baldy my hands get out in front of me I've got the world's shortest backswing because I've got the world's most inflexible spine which uh, restricts movement through there so um, I can hit it a long way I'll be honest with you it's just it's not going to be on my fairway so um, those were good times actually you met some good people they were good they were good fun the players association do a good job there I don't know if it's still the same but back then Back then, course, it was good. Of course, you'll remember your playing partner there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was, it was a good day. Moving right along. And this is, uh, we talk about post-career. Well, two of these people have gone on to a magnificent television career. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's the yeah, look, I, um, that was actually good fun. But I was, I was also... I was kind of working out what I was going to do. I said earlier, you know, I'd got an opportunity at Massey University, which was kind of a third of my time, if you like, a bit of coaching. And so I had time to to fill with other stuff. I actually enjoyed the media, um, working with some of the people within the uh, media realms and also um, did a couple of test matches in one day. As did radio as well. You know, you, you talk cricket like this, you know, this, how long have we talked for? Two hours? I don't know. But it's good fun, you know. Um, but at the same time, as my Massey hours have gone up, I've realized that it's nice to be away from cricket as well. And it does two things. It, it, it helps upskill you in other areas. But at the same time, it really makes me look forward to going back to cricket. Well, not back, but when I'm involved with cricket. Um, and I just wondered if, if staying in it full time and traveling the world and I don't know. Family, two young kids. You showed my wife before, Willie. Um, well played uh, and two young boys at that stage I was like I've got to be home a bit more Trent you'll know more about that but uh, I needed to be home and not be now that I've finished playing I'm now a commentator you know it just probably didn't fit with my psyche at the time How does it change things Bolte? A couple of kids Yeah hey, I don't want to sound like I'm you know the experienced father and you know whatever but um, it's definitely changed my point of view like I've only got a, a two year old and a, a little four month year old but um yeah like i tried to touch on before with the COVID 19 stuff going on and having that time away from the game it's it's really made me understand and appreciate that it is just a game and um yeah when i'm out there i, I do love what i'm doing i try to play with a smile on my face but it's definitely not gonna last forever but um yeah it's um definitely cool raising two little kids and, and hopefully they'll get the chance to, to see me out there still and, and doing my thing but um yeah how, how old are your kids now jake uh coming up 11 and coming up eight that's a better way to put it so um i mean willie knows them well actually 2018 white ferns tour to the uk which was a, a big one six or seven weeks and my family was with me for about three or four of those so i was basically working for free <laughs> but i tell you what the we did the old disneyland thing on the way over with the family and it's probably the greatest month of my life to be fair even though it was um you know, when you're stuck in a hotel room with them, but it was cool. And I think lockdown was the same, like at the time, especially when their schoolwork was backing up and I had work of my own and I was juggling that. There they are, Patrick and yeah. the Red and Thomas. Um, where the hell did you get that from? Did I send that to you? <laughs> um, uh, what's going on? Uh, we'll talk about it offline. Um, but... Yeah, I think, I th Boulder, you're right. Like, it gives you a new perspective and um, your job is your job. But I think when I started before wi a, a wife, before wife, <laughs> before a wife and kids, you sort of, cricket's everything, 99% of what you do. And then I think you realise there's actually more to it than that. And it, I don't want to say it becomes your job because it's still representing New Zealand and you're playing with mates and everything that goes with it. So it's not just a normal job, but you realise that away from cricket, there's some things that are uh, more important um, and obviously, the family is top of that top of that list. Great kids as well, to be fair, Jake. Um, and it, it just occurred to me when I was showing those photos, which were, you know, yeah. kind of embarrassing. I thought, why am I doing this to Jake? Because he's a great man. He's got some great kids as well. Um, and we have been on tour together. We've been some fantastic memories. Yeah, they, and uh, can I say yeah. that they love 
they love Willie. They, they, well, James Bennett, another New Zealand cricket dude, uh, media man. Uh, they love their JB and they love their Willie. And Baz, let's throw it to Ben Mackey as well. But that, that couple of weeks with Willie, taking them on dinner dates, hot chocolate dates, swimming, all sorts of stuff. Um, and some of the messages coming through, it was cool. It was a really good period. Thank you to Thank Willie you. for babysitting. We can all be heroes. That's why I did it. Right, last section for you, Jake, because baldy has got to go. He's got two kids coming through there. I've One's put together with into the studio, but that's all right. All right. Wow. Yeah. Um, we've got a. I've got a who am I section. Um, not a new concept, admittedly, but um, I want to take you guys through it. You get one. You get one bad guess. If, if you get once you've done one, that's your first DRS out. The next one you can't answer anymore. So it's a who am I? Um, I'm going to get it up here on the on the screen. I'll read it out. I'll narrate it, um, and you'll get to hear the. Um, You're a good quiz okay. master, Willie. Darby. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can you you just let me know when you can? Uh... Oh yeah. If I think it's who I think it is, then I'll tell you. After okay. Well, well, I'll, 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 I'll take you through it anyway um, as the quiz master. So I play cricket, international cricket with both of you. I first represented the Black Caps when I just turned twenty. Young star. I went on to play all three formats for New Zealand. I know. That's not who I thought it was. I claimed 183 international wickets. Now, you can use a buzzer technique, and you have to say the answer is, I am, say the name. So Does anyone like, want to put in a guess at this stage? I thought it was, can I throw in a, it's not my answer, but I thought it was Daniel Flynn, but it's not, because he didn't. I thought, it was, <laughs> I thought it was Milne, I really did, but all right. That's not my guess, though. Right. And that's just made me feel a lot more relieved about not giving the answers away. Okay, next time. A lot of my batting, a lot like my batting, pardon. My role was often varied and I could perform it at any stage of the innings. Versatile. A little like Horam. Standing at 1 metre, 96 oh. centimetres, I was not short. Is, is it me? No, I don't get that many wickets. 196. 196? Nah, there's no... Uh, like my oh, hero Jake, I finished my career playing in the various uh, T20 yeah, leagues. James Franklin. I am James Franklin. Yeah, I knew it yeah. was James Franklin too. Look at those great ones as well. He coaches at Durham. He, uh, he is, yeah. Frankie was so good and so easy on the eye, wasn't he? Like, and you mentioned there about an athlete, like him and I, because we were similar shapes. To be fair, there's a rainbow outside. Love it. To be fair, he was probably 20 kgs lighter than me, but we used to be paired up in the gym and he'd just pound out like wide grip chin-ups like they were nothing. And anyway, still got an issue with that, obviously. Jake, sure. before you go, is there anything you'd want to pass on to Bolty from uh, I know you guys hung out together when you were helping us with, as a bowling coach over in Australia, but you know, you look back to a player who's, who's still playing and still got time in his career. What, what would you what would you pass on? Oh, leave the hardest till last, Willie. Um, I, I think Bolte's probably played enough cricket to know what he's got to do while he's playing, but I think just uh, to make the most of it, and I'll look straight down the barrel, um, I think to make the most of it while you can. I mean, you mentioned it earlier on about retirement and what lockdowns mean to you, and I think, and I've sort of hinted it with stuff that I do now or had transitioned into here at um, Massey University. Um to make the most of it. And I know that's real cliched and cheesy and pretty generic, but you know, there will come a time when you don't have cricket and you're not sitting here and it, and it's not just the playing part of it. I think it's the peripheral stuff that you come to think is normal. You know, even if it's gold elite stuff in, here, in New Zealand, you know, like just enjoy it while you can make the most of it. Um, when it stops, you know, there's no regrets. Be thankful for what you've achieved and what you've got and look forward. Cause I know you've got a, you know, great family to go back to, but you know, you're going to have 30 years of them before normal retirement age. So you've got to make sure that you're ready for that. So until that point, enjoy it. Keep performing well, like I know you will. And uh, yeah, keep winning test matches for New Zealand. Like I know you will. Thanks brother. No, I think, well, you know, with Jake here, I think that was a, that was a beautiful interview really. We've got an hour's worth of footage there that we don't really need to crop at all because Jake was on, he was on fire. He sounds, you know, 
beautiful coming through that that headpiece. And um, mm. yeah, if there's if Messi doesn't work out for you with the um, you know being a professor or whatever you're trying to do, then you know um, podcasts, um, some meditation stuff, or um, just like audio books. I think you've really got the voice mm. for it. <laughs> so what you're getting is inspirational yeah yeah but this is obviously air traffic control stuff but i, I have lockdown has shown me the way with how to have zoom sessions or whatever this is called stream yard video so, conferencing yeah, yeah there'll yeah. always be a place for you on the podcast jake it's been fantastic to have you here the audio has been crisp the content's been great <laughs> taking time out of your Sunday and we do appreciate yeah. it, don't we, Balti? Yeah. Um, I'm going to put you back in the green room, Jake, so you can still watch the show um, nice. if you like, unless yeah. you've got something else to add. Yeah. What I have liked, can I just finish with the fact that everyone can see my wall planner in the background and yeah. I have made things up to make it look like I'm busy. <laughs> right. I'm going home. We need to edit that out for Messi. Yeah, no, good on you, mate. All right. Cheers, Love it, guys. See you, Jake. Thanks, see mate. You he was pretty good, wasn't he? He was. Talks well, the big man. Yeah. All right, Baldy. I'm aware the kids are banging down the door. Um, yeah. You know what I've got up the sleeve for you here. It's going to be nice and quick. Um, I don't and, believe uh, you, bro. Seriously. You don't believe that I got to your family? No. Nah. There's no way my mum would go on the lens, that's for sure. My <laughs> train. You hear that? No way, mate. Oh, yeah, you've got a hold of her. This is crazy. Hi Trent, I just wanted to say a little something to let you know how proud we all are of you. The way you present yourself on and off the field, you're so good with people, children look up to you and to see the look on their faces when you sign a bat, hat or take a selfie is priceless. Every time we see you on the field representing New Zealand, it's an amazing feeling for a parent. You always have a smile on your face. Even if you're doing it tough, it makes us so proud the way you can turn any situation into a positive and get the job done. I remember you as a young boy with your brother Jono in the backyard constantly playing cricket, so much so that the grass had disappeared into a batter's crease at one end and a bowling run up at the other. Jonathan was always the batter and you the bowler and of course dad in the background supervising. Who would have thought this would contribute to the bowler you are today? You've given us so many reasons to be proud of the man you have become, Trent, but the proudest moment for me is telling others that you are my son. It's your mum, isn't it? Yeah, that's emotional stuff, bro. Yeah. I don't know how you've done it. I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of speechless, speechless to be honest. There's, um, not many occasions where that happens, but no, bro, that was cool. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> well, it's funny when you put that, like when I put that together, I said, I don't know if, what Bolte will feel like. Is it, does it, is it actually quite emotional? Does it make you think about everything? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, we've touched a little bit on, you know, me being a parent now and, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about it, but I'm, I'm conscious of how my kids see me and et cetera. And, um, you know, I want them to be proud of me, but um, obviously my parents, are, it's the flip side. and. Um, yeah, I'm the guy they've raised and uh, I'm out there doing my thing and I, I know they are proud of me 100% and yeah, the, the passion that, that both mum and dad um, show and the sacrifices they've made over the, over the years and, and putting it on all those yards. But no, it's, it's pretty cool to hear my mum's my mum's voice uh, over a couple of uh, couple of cool photos there and um, yeah, it was, it was touching, bro. Thank you very much. No, that's absolutely fine, Balti. Um, I've got a couple more photos and then you are officially off the um off the hook mate but um just quickly on the families like even kj speaking about it and the the sort of environment because we're playing so much you're traveling so much they are pretty important eh? and it's not just your own fam immediate family it can be your parents your your partners parents etc how big are they in in the modern day international cricketers lives do you think yeah i think it's all significant eh? like the, the amount of times we we're living out of a suitcase and the, the time that we are on the road it's um it's phenomenal. I, I remember well, it's this time last year when we were leading up into the World Cup, we 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 calculated that we'd been away for like 270 days of of the 365, and you know it's um it's a hard challenge. It's probably the in my opinion the biggest challenge of it when you're trying to raise a young family or you're you're new into a relationship or whatever it is, and, and you're literally away for 10 months of the year. It's um a big sacrifice to make from from everyone's point of view. But no, I'm I'm very lucky with with my situation with with my wife Gert and our two young kids and. Um, yeah, it's just literally the best feeling coming home to them and, and having that, that time. But um, yeah, 
no, I'm, I'm very lucky at the moment and it's um yeah pretty cool to see stuff like that it's, it's wicked a uh, couple left for you from the back in the day uh i mean obviously first thing that sticks out here is that beautiful headband yep that was a big part of my uh, early childhood days i don't know who was the inspiration behind the headband but yeah I had the blonde <laughs> tips yeah. <laughs> i had the blonde tips in there and um i've got the puma boots on as well so that's um it's a vintage photo, but yeah, under 19 World Cup New Zealand, I actually um, I ran that over in Malaysia, so I wish you had some footage of that. But look at mm. that, fast 10 years, and there I am. It's pretty similar action. I mean, I'm no bowling coach, but it, it, it seems to have not changed too much. Is that how you see it? Well, I went through, like I said in, in the interview with Jake there, I went through a stress fracture and um, had a bit of a setback, setback there, but that, that footage there on the left was probably under 19s, under 17s maybe. And yeah, that's that's just how it works. Eh? You, you stick with it as a kid and you make the odd little adjustment, but no, nothing's too much changed in, in, in my action too, really. This is you breaking through at night's level. Um, can you remember your earlier days and whether you thought you could make that next step up to the Black Caps? Yeah, HIV Cup, yeah, Northern Night. Um, Had a few sponsors that tournament, to be fair. It did, yeah. No, that was um, yeah, back in the day. But uh, yeah, haircut, as everyone goes through a stage, it looked like I was running the, the kiwi fruit head there, just the, the same length all over. So I feel like I've got a bit of a thing, but uh, yeah, I don't want to sound too arrogant. <laughs> uh, your mum mentioned uh, with the fans and Bolte, just if I can say one thing is that I really enjoy working with you, mate, is the relationship you do have with the fans. And a lot of it, um, you see a weight, you can't capture all of it. Um, but it seems to be a part of being an international professional cricketer that you do enjoy is that that chance to inspire. Is it fair to say that? Yeah, I love, you know, trying to, well, I suppose when I was a kid, I was down at Seddon Park and Blake Park and, um, you know, all sorts of ground watching, you know, the Chris Kenses and the Flemings and the Shane Bond was a big inspiration to me. And, you know, you, you flip the, um, the coin a bit and, I'm hoping there'll be a few kids out there saying that I want to be Trent Bolt or, or Tim Southey or Neil Wagner or whoever it is. And, you know, I remember being one of those kids and screaming out for autographs. So, yeah, that's no, my favourite part of uh, being down there on the boundary to, to get that chance. I think that was at Bay Oval at my local ground as well. So, no, it's cool to see all the kids there in the first place wanting a support crew. I think we can safely say there's plenty of players who, who do want to emulate you guys. Now, we're coming into the World Cup, uh, Bolty, when you when you see a picture like that with you guys standing there, World Cup logo on on your chest, what comes to mind? Yeah, I probably still can't talk about the World Cup to be honest. Um, yeah, I've had uh, two campaigns and two cracks at it, and um, you know, come agonisingly close in, in both of them. But um, yeah, that, was a, that was a wicked tournament. There's no doubt about it. It was uh, an amazing time away, a big time away, ten weeks in the end, pretty much, and you know, to fall very very close and, and not be able to lift that trophy is is pretty hard to stomach. But um, Hey, I know, you know, looking on the bright side, what it's done for for cricket around the world and cricket in this country, you know, every kid in this country wants to grow up and be an all black. And there's, you know, a half dozen of them that want to be black caps. And, and now I know there's, you know, hundreds more that would love to be out there with that black cap on their head. So, no, nah, very cool memories. Absolutely. Has it, has it changed since the World Cup? Has it got easier? Has it got harder? Do you mind people talking about it? Do you not want to talk about it? Where does it sort of sit for you these days? Yeah, it's still fresh to be honest. Like even thinking now that this time last year we were we we're on the ship to go over there and, and have a crack at it. It's, um yeah. It's pretty hard with with social media and you know, anyone's pretty much got access to you to post anything and, and post anything. But um yeah, it's um I'm I'm taking it for all that it was in terms of a an amazing experience, a stage that I've always dreamt of being on and um yeah, I remember the last couple of run outs there thinking Geez, what if I fumbled it? What if I did something or whatever? And, you know, we wouldn't even been there in the Super Over. But, um, yeah, no, it was a crazy, crazy few weeks. Low-key, that pickup when Santner has thrown it full bore from uh, long off to pick it up on the half volley and take it off, which is there, is a low-key huge keeping moment without gloves. Um, <laughs> and then that, that's the end of it there as well, mate. And, yeah, I know you, you speak about it. I think it's like that for all cricket Kiwi fans, and we could probably never relate to it actually being out there in the middle. But... I think most people come to what you said at the end where there's just that huge pride in what you guys did there and, and how you were able to actually inspire our next generation. And um, as we spoke about, mate, that's kind of what it's about, isn't it? So, um, yeah, certainly something that we can bottle going forward. Yeah, 100%. And, yeah, we'll have a, 
another crack as a country in, in a few years' time in India, which will be uh, an amazing experience for whoever's involved there. Hopefully, obviously, I'm on there and, and doing my thing. But um, no, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate and very lucky to to have experienced everything that I have so far. And um, no, uh, we jokingly said that I wear this around the house, um, this shirt. Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of of putting it on and, and seeing my name on it, and um, you know, getting the chance to go out there and do my thing. So no, it's it's been pretty cool over the years. Absolutely, Bolty. Well, look, mate, I, I feel like I have ambushed you a little bit with this, just saying I'm going to get you on the line. We're going to bring some guests in, but uh, you've been fantastic, mate, with giving me some of your time, bringing us into your house there in Mount Monganui and uh, chatting to a former teammate and a current teammate, mate. It's been uh, really enlightening and, and pretty cool to sit into, so I appreciate that. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, but no, it's been good. Thank you for the lovely surprise, and um, yeah, no, I look forward to hopefully doing a few more. Eh? We'll, uh... We'll keep getting those guests on and, and see where it takes us. Absolutely, mate. That's the way to do it. So uh, I don't even know how you end this. We don't even have a sting, you know. We've just got to yeah. we put it in the hole. And we'll do it, bro. But no, thank you very much. Cool. Cheers, Baldy. Thanks, mate. Easy, bro.